Now on Friday Football Fever. Tonight on Friday Night Football Fever, it's playoff time. Teams from all across northern Indiana hit the gridiron tonight to begin their runs at a sectional title. See who's moving on and whose season will come to an end. And the regular season comes to a close in Michigan. Benton Harbor looks to complete an undefeated season. St. Joseph plays for the conference title. It's all now on Friday Night Football Fever. You're watching Friday Night Football Fever, presented by First State Bank and North End Cycle. The hits start now. Good evening. Welcome to Friday Night Football Fever. He's Dean. I'm Pete. And here we are. We have made it to the playoffs. Yeah, you know, a few of our teams were off tonight with first round buys. So you won't see Penn, Laporte, mm -hmm. Adams, Elkhart, Central Goshen, or Concord. Not this week. In fact, only one game tonight in Class 5A in Northern Indiana. It features the Mishawaka Cavemen and Elkhart Memorial. Can I get a yeah? Yeah! Can I get a oh yeah? Oh yeah! And get an oh yeah. Mishawaka always thrives this time of year, but Elkhart Memorial thinking upset tonight. First drive, the cavemen get right to work. Vernon Daniels takes the pitch and goes 26 yards and into the end zone. Mishawaka needing just a few plays to go up seven to nothing. But Memorial's defense gave them some trouble tonight. The Chargers force three first quarter turnovers. That's not normal. This pass intercepted by Memorial's Nolan Gross, and he's going to take it all the way back into caveman territory. That drive would stall, but the Chargers would cash in on another turnover here. Mark Brownlee makes a nice move here, gets into the end zone for the touchdown. The extra point would be blocked, so Mishawaka's lead was 7-6 after one quarter. But then their offense gets rolling in the second. Ryan Robluski calls his own number. And 51 yards later, the quarterback is into the end zone. Mishawaka would go on to win tonight 42 to 13. They host South Bend Adams next Friday. So now we turn our attention to Class 4 A Dean and the most dominant team in this area this year, one of the most dominant teams in the state, the Northwood Panthers. Oh, yeah, you know, we're talking the Northwood Panthers, and you think about Nate Andrews. He vowed to bring the program back. Between 93 and 96, they went undefeated in the yeah. regular season, but it's been 20 years since that happened. And of course, he wanted to make his school and his father proud. Let's go out to Jim Andrews Field where you can see the lights of the stadium for miles. Of course, the team comes out and the coach goes over to his kids and gets oh, some great. good luck. I love that. <laughs> How about the quarterback, Trey Belinsky, gets it to Drew Minnick, 34 yards, and that's a Panthers touchdown. Northwood was up 6-0 to on their first drive. Panther pride beaming for Summer Stilson and the crew in the front row. Give it to Bronson Yoder for the two-point conversion. Northwood led 8-0. to zero. Northwood cheerleaders have plenty to cheer about this season. Plays like this make it look easy. Watch some of these blocks. Then watch Brayton Yoder. It's like he's stepping over road apples in a parade, man. He's got sweet feet. Dancing 59 yards all the way to the end zone. One of the linemen said afterward, that's dirty, man. The Panthers <laughs> looking like Bo Derrick because they're a perfect 10. 52 to 13, the final. So they would get the winner of Wallace C and Northridge. And get this, the Warriors beat the Raiders in double overtime back on September 2nd, 21 to 20. Remember that score. Wallace C's Noah Watkins goes 30 yards and he's taking it for the touchdown. Wallace C up 7 to 0. And then it's more Watkins. They say get the ball to Noah. And Noah says, yes, sir. A 10-yard TD. They had a 14-0 lead, but Northridge wins 21-20. How odd is that? The same score as earlier this season. All right, let's keep it in Class 4A. Plymouth was at Angola tonight, and the Rockies pull out a win 26-23. They will move on to play East Noble. We did have a camera at that game. We'll have some highlights coming up at 11 over on WSBT 22. Moving on in Class 4A, South Bend St. Joe hosting Andran in a tough night for the Tribe. Trailing 14-7 in the second quarter. Niners quarterback Francis Reardon craps off a long drive with a short touchdown. Andrean up 21-7. Coach Brian Witten trying to find something positive for his team to build on, but Andrean could not be stopped tonight. A nice long gain over the middle would set up a field goal attempt right before halftime. Andrean goes on to beat St. Joe and end their season tonight 30-13. And in South Bend, Jarvis Edison and the Riley Wildcats going up against New Prairie to open up sectional play. After a scoreless first quarter, third and long, Nick Wilson rolls out to his right, lofts it up deep downfield, and Garrett Ruiz is there for the touchdown. New Prairie goes up 7 to nothing. But check this out, because on the ensuing kickoff, Riley has an answer. That is Jalen Jennings back deep to receive this one at about his own 15-yard line. Shows a little patience. 
and it shows a lot of speed. Explodes through the hole, 85 yards for the touchdown, and Jennings evens the score. Time to get him a much-needed breather after that one. Nice run, young man. But you know what? One good return deserves another. Riley punting, and we've seen Ruiz once already. This time catching a punt and taking it the other way for his second touchdown of the night. Great plays in this one. Riley would eventually pull away to win 42-14. And on the other half of this bracket, South Bend Clay's season comes to an end tonight. They fall at Kankakee Valley 49-8. And Washington sees its season come to an end. They lose 33-14 to Hobart. So we got 5A and 4A in the books. Now we turn our attention Dean, to 3A where Marion has put together an amazing season. Yeah, you know, and they want to have a great postseason as well. They've won five sectional championships, including last year, 2012, and they wanted to beat Wheeler tonight. A team they beat by 20 points last year in the playoffs, looking for some postseason success at the night house. And here come those Marion Knights. They were ready to run, especially number four, Xander the Great. Alex Alexander Horvath carves a Z in the Wheeler defense. He had 300 yards in the game, running up 6-0. to zero. The nighttime cheerleaders all smiles on this beautiful fall night. Reggie Galan's a smart coach. He called another mm -hmm. play for Z. Xander around the left end, the second of his five TDs. I feel like I could call their plays this year. I think you could with <laughs> Xander playing. They've got some D, too. DeAntre, he gets the pick. DeAntre... And Marion win it 57-8, to eight, the final. The Knights move on with a 9-1 and one record. All right, saying in Class A, you know they live for this time of year down in the banks of Bago. Jimtown hosting Heritage and moving the ball through the air here. Sam Bollock has Nick Weiss wide open, and he's got room to run. Going to take it down inside the red zone before he's finally dragged out of bounds, but the Jimmies are up 14-0 after the first quarter. So we move ahead to the second quarter, and they're going to finish the drive on the other end. They give it to Kenny Kern, who stays on his feet and high steps it into the end zone. Jimmy's up 21 to nothing, and they would ride Kern all night as they have for most of the year. Here he nearly has another score, but he's tripped up just inside the one. Hang on to that football. Don't worry, he's going to get it back, get another touchdown. Big win for Jimtown tonight, 49-6. to They will face West Noble next Friday, who beat Tippy Valley 30-28. to How about 8-1, Garrett? They were at 1-8 Fairfield. The Falcons, they just hadn't put four quarters together this year. Played the Railroaders three weeks ago and lost by 10. Falcon Zach Lance got it to Cordell Hofer. That cut the Garrett lead to six. Then back come the Railroaders. They go up to Cameron Smith for the short TD. Garrett wins 42-16. to They're going to face the winner of CMA and Lakeland. And I don't have the final score off the top of my head, but I do know Culver Military won that game, so they're going to get the Eagles. Playing well in the second yeah, half no of the season. No doubt about it. Whew, I need a timeout. How about you? Yeah, let's take one. That's a lot to get to. We've still got plenty ahead here tonight, including Class 2A and 1A highlights. Plus, Benton Harbor looks to close out an undefeated regular season. We will head north of the state line and check in with the Tigers when Friday Night Football Fever returns. Friday Football Fever, brought to you by First State Bank and North End Cycle. Welcome back to Friday Night Football Fever. We continue our playoff coverage now with Class 2A. Yeah, you know, after a tough NIC schedule, Bremen was hoping to do some damage mm -hmm. in the tournament. Talk about the Lions. They have 14 sectional championships, including five out of the last six years. Tonight, they hosted Wabash. And this weekend reminds us all of the three C's, Kerry Jones, Casey Miller, and Chad Beeson. 13-year anniversary of their death by a drunk driver is this Monday. Bremen honored the police department. They had a B on the field. Mr. Brad, Kyle, and the crew watching the Lions. Bremen down 7-0 when Grant Cloco gets the ball. He races to the end zone. Bremen tied the game 7-all. The Lions got the ball back, and sophomore Nate Mullen gets the call. Good to see him back. It's 14-7 Lions. The Apaches were driving at the end of the half, but look at number seven. He gets picked off by number seven. Evan Martin goes racing all the other way, just like a fast Chevy. Bremen led 21-7 at halftime. They go on to win 35-14. Always nice to get a W on three C's night. And Coach Tim Roth and company move on because Winnemac beat Cass 28-8. And Oak Hill knocks out Rochester 48-0. Tough season for the Zebras. And in Class 3A tonight, LaVille at home taking on Fremont. All about that kid right there, Ethan Kurtai. In the first quarter, takes the direct snap, cuts it straight up the field, and when he gets to the edge, now we've seen this before, nobody's going to catch him. 43 yards for the touchdown as the Lancers are out ahead one score early. 
Then following a LaVille interception, well, they go to Kertai on the pitch. He finds the seam, loses three defenders somehow. <laughs> great wow. vision, great instincts. LaVille up ahead by 14. And Eaton says, you want one more, folks? We can give you one more. Here it is, the exact same pitch play and the exact same result. Colin plays for them, kind of like Colin plays for Marion, yeah, right? get him the ball. Just give 21, him the ball. Go. Kurtai with 185 yards, four touchdowns in the first quarter. Wow. Lancers win big, 41 to 13. They'll take on Culver next week. Culver won 32-14 over North Miami. A couple other scores to pass along in Class A. Triton shuts out casting tonight, 50 to nothing. Yeah, let's move up to Michigan where the regular season wraps up tonight and there's still a lot to be determined. Yeah, that's right. At 6-2, and two, St. Joe already qualified for the playoffs, but tonight they have a chance to win a conference title. St. Joe 2-1 in the league, hosting Portage Central 3-0 and oh in the conference. Winner gets the crown. Second quarter, Bears trailing, but on the move, Griffin Baudette hooks up with Isaac Russell for the first down. Then on the next play, Jake Schramm has got room to run. He's going into the end zone, or is he? Chase down from behind, oh, Rain my. Potts strips him, and the football goes out of the end zone. So it's a turnover, and Portage takes over the football. And two plays later, don't you know it, Elliot Ryan's going 60 yards the other way for the touchdown. Potential 14-point swing there, and it would be the difference. Portage Central up 14-0 at the half, and they go on to beat the Bears 24-14. The best story in the state of Michigan, 8-0. Benton Harbor hosting 2-5 Muskegon Heights. Division IV's third-ranked Tigers having their best season since the 1943 season when they were mythical state champs. Already qualified for the playoffs, the Tigers' Denny Brown gets it to George Walker IV. That's an 18-yard gain. And if you get the ball to Jeremy Burrell this close, you know Booby's going to score. The Tigers lead 7-0. Then some defense. Muskegon fumbles the pitch. Adrian Alexander and Jaquan Bennett are all over it. Benton Harbor is 9-0. They win huge 54-6. It's on to the playoffs for Coach Uzelak and the Tigers. Well, you're right. That is a great story. A few more results. Lakeshore beats Niles tonight 27-6. Buchanan big over Brandywine 48-12. And Edwardsburg also completing wow, a perfect Eddies, regular yeah. season this year. 57-0 over Sturgis they win tonight. We're going to take one more time out, but after the break, we hand the show over to you. Here come the finalists for highlight of the night. It's right after this. Friday Football Fever, brought to you by First State Bank and North End Cycle. Hey, welcome back. Time to pass out a big award tonight. Right. And who gets the fans of the night? We're going to Mishawaka Marion. They had the costumes out, they had the spirit, and they had the winning team. Mishawaka Marion, you guys are the fans of the night. And that means it's time for us to determine the highlight of the night where we turn the show over to you. So without further ado, here is our first nominee for the highlight of the night. And this one was a no-brainer. Look at Brayton Yoder busting to the outside, and then he's getting some blocks and going to do the rest himself right here. 59 yards for the touchdown. Northwood, vote now for the highlight of the night. That's one option. You could also vote for Riley's Jalen Jennings, who fields the kickoff against New Prairie at his own 15. Waits for the hole and then explodes for an 85-yard touchdown return. You can vote for him now for highlight of the night. Or if you'd like, you can vote for Wawasee's Noah Watkins, who looks like he gets stuffed at the line of scrimmage here, but then spins out of a tackle and takes off for a 30-yard touchdown run. Those are your three nominees for highlight of the night, and you can vote now. Our poll is live on Twitter. It's also available on WSBT.com. Get online, vote, and join us back over on WSBT 22 in about 15 minutes where we will reveal the winner of tonight's highlight of the night. Great candidates this week. Mm -hmm.